Hey everybody, welcome back to Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. Today we're going to be discussing a medication known as hydromorphone. Its brand name is Dilaudid. And before I talk about the medication itself, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. And quickly, if at any time during this video you find the information to be valuable, please consider leaving a like on the video as it would really help me out with the YouTube algorithm. So first off, what will we cover in this presentation? We're going to start by talking about how hydromorphone works. We'll discuss indications or reasons we would prescribe this medication to a patient, then contraindications or reasons we would not be able to prescribe hydromorphone, followed by examples of dosing, and then stick around till the end where we'll talk about side effects with percentages. So how does hydromorphone work? Well, first of all, it's a pure opioid agonist. It acts primarily as an analgesic agent or a medication used to treat pain. Its clinical effects are due to agonist action at the mu opioid receptor. So when do we prescribe hydromorphone? We see this medication given to patients for moderate to severe pain, typically in opioid tolerant patients, so patients who have had opioids in the past and that are requiring long-term daily around the clock opioid analgesics. Now contraindications or reasons we would not be able to give this medication. So the first would be if a patient had a hypersensitivity to hydromorphone or an allergy. Uh, we wouldn't be able to give this medication to patients who have acute or severe bronchial asthma in an unmonitored setting, typically without the re necessary resuscitative equipment available. It would be contraindicated in patients who have a gastrointestinal obstruction, in patients who are opioid non-tolerant, non and in patients who have significant respiratory depression. Now for dosing, when used to treat pain, we would see the immediate release formulation given at 2 to 4 milligrams orally every 4 to 6 hours as needed. The dose can then be gradually increased based on effectiveness and tolerance. If it was given intravenously, we may see 0.2 to 1 milligram intravenously over at least 2 to 3 minutes. Now as with all medications, there are some side effects or adverse reactions that patients may experience while using hydromorphone, so I'll go over some of those here now. So dizziness may happen between 1 and 11% of the time, and up to 12% of patients may develop a headache. Less than 2% may develop somnolence, and also less than 2% may develop flushing. Pruritus, or itchiness, may happen 1 to 8% of the time, and 7 to 31% may develop constipation. Vomiting may occur 6 to 14% of the time, and asthenia, or abnormal weakness, may happen 1 to 11% of the time. Sweating is also a possibility. Now some more serious but rare side effects would be hypotension or a drop in blood pressure that would happen less than 2% of the time, suicidal thoughts, or respiratory depression. That's all we're going to talk about today with hydromorphone or dilaudid. As always, I'm very thankful you took the time to come by and watch one of my videos. If you found the information to be valuable and you'd like to help grow this channel, you can like the videos, share the videos, or most importantly subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's also some links in the description you can check out as well. That's it for today. Take care.